In this video, you are going to learn everything you need to know to get started on Feral Druid in Cataclassic. You're going to learn the best race, talents, glyphs, gear, professions, and of course, macros to get you instantly ahead of the competition. Okay, so before we start, if you want a fresh UI for Cata using our brand new skill capped add on, be sure to check out our updated classic site at skillcap.com. We've got literally everything you need to make sure you don't fall behind in the latest expansion, including specialized guides at your fingertips from rank one players, which will teach you exactly what you need to master your class. From maximizing damage to mastering CC and more, everything is covered. And while everyone else is going to be slowly figuring everything out themselves, you can skip this process with skill cap quickly putting you ahead of the competition. So much so, in fact, that we literally guarantee you'll gain at least 400 rating when actively using our service. So join us today using the exclusive discount link in the description below. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So let's kick things off at the character select screen where it's time to choose your race. Now on the Alliance side, your only real option is Night Elf, and this gives us access to one of the best racials outside of human which is Shadow Meld. Shadow Meld is extremely powerful on stealth classes as it effectively allows you to re-stealth instantly since you drop combat when melding. You can even use Shadow Meld to avoid incoming CC and immune projectiles coming right at you. Now, for Horde, you really only have one option to choose from and your best option is gonna be Torrent. Torrent has access to War Stomp, which will allow us to pair War Stomp with Cyclone. This can also be used as a restun to try and land a kill on an enemy. While Horde is a solid option, most of the druids that you're going to see are going to find themselves on the Alliance playing Night Elf, as the benefits of Shadow Meld just far outweigh those of War Stomp. Talents work slightly differently in Cataclysm, so let's break down everything that you need to know. There's only one build that you're going to be playing, but there will be some minor adjustments that you can make to it. You'll notice some familiar talents, but do pay attention as they do have different effects. Survival Instincts no longer increases your health, but it instead provides a 50% damage reduction for 12 seconds. Additionally, you're going to notice that Berserk no longer acts as a fear immunity. Now, you do have flexibility with your defensive talents, though. Thick Hide is a simple talent that increases your armor, so if you're fighting a lot of teams with magical damage, then you can drop this for Perseverance in the Restoration Tree, which reduces magic damage taken. Now, in comps where you're struggling to survive that have a mix of physical and magical damage, then you can drop the two points in Endless Carnage, which just increases the duration of several abilities for two points in Perseverance while keeping Thick Hide. This is going to be good into comps like Rogue Lock that have a decent mix of physical and magical damage. Along with talents, the glyph system has changed just a little bit in Cataclysm. Now you're going to have three additional prime glyph slots on top of major and minor. Your glyphs are fairly set in stone and you're not going to have any room for flexibility here as they're mandatory for our build and utility. Glyph of Berserk increases the duration of our major offensive cooldown by 10 seconds, nearly doubling its duration. Glyph of Rip increases the periodic damage of your rip. Glyph of Bloodletting is very important as when you shred or mangle, it'll extend the duration of rip. Your builds will have the same three major glyphs, Barkskin, Feral Charge, and Pounce. Glyph of Barkskin is key to your survival as it makes it so that when Barkskin is activated, it'll reduce your chance to be crit. Glyph of Feral Charge reduces the cooldown of this ability, which can be very helpful for kiting or closing gaps. And finally, we have Glyph of Pounce. This increases the range of this ability, so you can potentially avoid enemies knocking you out of stealth. Finally, our minor glyphs are actually pretty useful. Glyph of Dash reduces the cooldown on Dash by 20%, and this is our main movement ability. Glyph of Mark of the Wild reduces the mana cost of this ability by 50%. And our final minor glyph is whatever you want to slot in. In this case, we placed Glyph of Aquatic Form here, but there really are no other impactful glyphs. 
Okay, so before we continue, we have an exclusive skill cap tip to help you get started in Kata PvP, coming directly from our new classic course. Welcome back to another episode of our Cataclysm Feral Damage course. In this installment, we're going to be breaking down our main offensive cooldown, Berserk. Berserk is a 3-minute cooldown that, when used, will simply cut the energy cost of all your abilities in half lasting for 15 seconds, which is further increased up to 25 seconds when playing with the Glyph of Berserk. Generally, there's going to be two main goals we have when using Berserk. That's either making use of the lower energy cost to enable us an easier time at maintaining or even applying our bleeds on multiple targets, or otherwise using it while bleeds are already active, which can enable us to leverage Berserk more so as a single target burst cooldown granting us the ability to pump out much higher pressure by utilizing consistent shreds and ferocious bites. So before we get into the best times to make use of it, there's a few very important things to note here. First being that due to Berserk not directly increasing our damage, we're not going to have to worry about snapshotting our bleeds like we do with Tiger's Fury. Second is that while Berserk is active, you're unable to use Tiger's Fury. However, if you have Tiger's Fury active already, you can still use Berserk. This means our first rule for using Berserk is to always try and combine it alongside our Tiger's Fury, especially if we're aiming to maximize our spread pressure, as this way you can make use of the lower energy cost to apply your empowered bleeds on multiple targets. If you're not using Berserk immediately, you should consider delaying it anywhere up to 10 or even 15 seconds in order to ensure you have Tiger's Fury active first and your empowered bleeds rolling. Generally though, with the pace of Cataclysm arenas as a whole, your goal is to use Berserk fairly liberally. It's not really a cooldown we're looking to hold on to for extended periods or say for that perfect moment. Instead, it's going to be something you want to pop either in the opener, combined with your Tiger's Fury, or very shortly after. However, there is some exceptions to this as we still, of course, want to get as much value out of those 25 seconds as possible. Now, what this means is our goal is to spend almost all of that duration inside of cat form dealing damage. This means you want to aim to avoid popping Berserk in situations where you're either low on health and have the potential of being forced into bear form or having to kite, or otherwise are vulnerable to being crowd controlled. As such, it's best to use your first Tiger's Fury to apply your bleeds and then pop Berserk very shortly after, or delay it until the next, once you're on diminishing returns for potential crowd control. If you want to learn more tips like these, then check out our brand new class courses at skillcap.com by using the links below. All right, next up, let's go over your best in-slot gear for Season 9. First up, let's go over stat priority. You're going to want as much agility as possible, and you're naturally going to acquire this through your gear. After that, your highest priority is hitting the 5% hit cap. This ensures that your abilities don't miss because nothing is more frustrating then when you're about to win the game and then your killing blow just totally misses the target. So after that, you're then going to need 195 spell penetration. This is going to ensure that your spells don't miss and this is necessary to land clones. Then you're going to want at least 3000 resilience. This is going to help you ensure you can survive enemy kill attempts. After that, you'll want mastery. This increases the damage of your bleeds, which is your primary source of damage. Crit is going to be after that, and it is worse than Mastery, but still not bad, since Bleeds can now crit in Cataclysm. And finally, your lowest priority is Haste. In fact, you're going to notice in our biz list that we have 0% Haste. But before we show you your best in slot, be sure to check out our article site after the video for your pre-biz gear using the link in the description below. Now, let's take a look at what items you should aim to get as the season progresses. In Season 9, all of your best in-slot gear is going to come from PvP and PvE. Barkskin and Bear Form make us extremely tanky so we can play lower resilience here. Your main pieces are going to be the Vicious Gladiator's Sanctuary Set, which includes the Vicious Gladiator's Dragonhide Helm, Spalders, Robes, and Gloves. In your Leg Slot, you're going to be using Storm Rider's Leg Guards. For your Off Pieces, you're going to want Cloak of Biting Chill, which comes from PvE, your bracers are going to be Vicious Gladiator's Arm Wraps of Accuracy. 
Belt of the Fallen Brood in the waste slot, which also comes from PvE. And finally, to round out our off pieces, you have Vicious Gladiator's Boots of Cruelty in the boot slot. For your weapons, you're going to want to be using Vicious Gladiator's Pike, or you can opt for a PvE option of Malevolence from Bastion of Twilight. The Relic slot will be occupied by the Vicious Gladiator's Relic of Triumph. For your jewelry, you're going to want to pick up the Vicious Gladiator's Necklace of Prowess. For your rings, you're going to want to grab the Vicious Gladiator's Ring of Accuracy and Cruelty. Finally, for your trinkets, use the Vicious Gladiator's Medallion of Tenacity. You'll then use the Vicious Gladiator's Badge of Conquest to help snapshot your bleeds. When it comes to reforging, your goal is to stick to your stats, and you're going to end up reforging any extra hit and other stats to mastery. With your gear sorted, let's get everything gemmed and enchanted. Your best enchants are not going to change as the expansion progresses. Your helmet enchant, Arcanum of Vicious Agility, comes from PvP, so it is going to be relatively easy to obtain. Your second enchant is Greater Inscription of Vicious Agility for your shoulders. This too comes from PvP. Then head to the auction house where you're going to pick up the rest of your enchants. For the chest, you can either do Peerless Stats or Mighty Resilience. Mighty Resilience helps to increase your survivability, but in comps where you might not be the target, the extra damage from Peerless Stats is going to be beneficial. We recommend tailoring for your profession, which means your cloak will be enchanted with Sword Guard. If you choose another profession, then you're going to want to grab Greater Critical Strike. You'll then grab Agility for your Bracers, Greater Mastery for your Gloves, and Major Agility for your Boots. We don't care about the movement speed enchants since they don't affect cat form movement speed. For the remaining slots, embellish your legs with Dragon Scale Leg Armor, and then put Major Agility on your weapon. Finally, don't forget to get an Even Steel Belt Buckle for an extra gym slot. And speaking of which, let's get things gymmed. For your meta socket, you're going to be slotting in an Agile Shadow Spirit Diamond. This is going to provide you with some agility and increase the amount of damage that your critical strikes deal. In your red slots, you're only going to be using Delicate Inferno Ruby. Unlike other classes, we don't need Resilience Gems to survive, so we can go full damage gems. In your blue slots, you need to be using Stormy Ocean Sapphire so that we can reach our spell penetration cap of 195. And in our yellow slots, we're going to be using Adept Ember Topaz for more agility and mastery. Professions will matter once more in Cataclysm, and there are a few choices. You're going to want to go blacksmithing and tailoring, but you do have some flexibility here. Blacksmithing is an obvious pick as it gives you two additional sockets on your bracers and gloves. These are prismatic sockets, meaning that you can fill these with any stat that you need, or agility gems for more damage. Your second default pick is Tailoring for Sword Guard, and this enchant provides a massive attack power buff which we can pair with our cooldowns, such as Berserk. As an alternative pick to Tailoring, you can go Jewel Crafting, and the benefit is that you're going to gain a little more main stat for your gems. This can be easier to manage as you're not playing around a proc, but it is overall less pressure. Finally, let's wrap things up with every macro you're going to need to be competitive in PvP. First up, you're going to want Focus Macros for Skull Bash, Entangling Roots, Hibernate, Cyclone, and Fairy Fire. If you're looking to elevate your macros, you can take these and turn them into Arena 1-2-3 macros for Cyclone, Entangling Roots, and Fairy Fire. This is going to give you the most control and speed if you can afford the keybind space. In Kata, you can only bash in bear form. So you should have a macro that instantly swaps you into bear to use this ability. You'll also want a macro for when you want to feral charge in bear form. You'll also need one for frenzied regeneration. Now for our offensive macros, you should have a macro for berserk and tiger's fury to pair with your on use trinket. And finally, we have our stampeding roar macro that we can use to catch up to enemies that are kiting or kite ourselves. All right, guys, that about wraps it up for this one. Before you go, though, be sure to check out Skillcapped. We are the only service that dares to literally guarantee you're going to climb at least 400 rating when actively using our service. And, uh, well, if you don't, you don't pay. Simple as that. As always, though, we want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you soon.